Thank you, everyone. Certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity on behalf of, uh, well, to speak, I, I thank Canadian Digestive Health Foundation. I am a passionate dietitian. You're going to hear me talk about food nutrition, and certainly in terms of the topic, the diet, the role diet plays in digestive health. And I'm going to zero in on that that is perhaps most passionate to me, fiber. That whole topic, I was just showing one of the gastroenterologists who is emeritus, retired, and he goes, Sandra, I didn't realize fiber is more than one word. I've got three pages all related to the different fiber compounds, and he goes, I think we need a book. I'm going to keep it short for you tonight, but what I will tell you is that uh, I am also the chief nutrition officer for Prenexus Health. This is a company producing prebiotic called xylooligosaccharide. However, that company has played no role in directing or providing any information in any way for me to speak to you tonight. What I will talk to you about is you'll learn about the role that a healthy, balanced diet plays in digestive health. I'll also share with you the impact of digestive fiber on both digestion and health, or sorry, dietary fiber on digestion and health. Teach you about some of the different types of fiber and their food sources as well too. And I do want to tell you that the keys to good digestive health, number one would be a balanced intake of carbohydrate, protein, fat, and fluid. Now, I do want you to be aware that there are some triggers that can upset your stomach. And for registered dietitians, when we have patients come to see us, some of the common triggers include the alcohol, caffeine, high fat foods, the spicy foods that can vary for every single one of us. And at the same time, some tips to limit your intake of swallowed air when you're drinking through straws or the same in terms of chewing gum. If you eat very quickly or if you eat while you're stressed, distress may well happen as well. But what's really important to me when I look at the diets, not only of those individuals who I, I help as a registered dietitian, but I know about all of us in Canada, most of us are not consuming enough of the right kind of carbohydrates. The simple sugars, I suggest we aim to limit those. Why? Well, that microbiome, those bacteria in your intestine, they love sugar. And when they feed on that sugar, mmm, guess what? Those are the gas producers. So anyone coming in talking about, you know, the issues they've got, aim to limit the simple sugars. The other, the complex carbohydrates, that food that we are consuming ends up being the food for the gut bacteria. So fruits, the vegetables, the whole grain, bread, cereals, pasta, rice, get rid of the white stuff. Let's start eating the whole grains. And at the same time, the nuts and seeds are good complex carbohydrates. Choose your fiber wisely. I want it to come from a variety of sources. I want adequate intake. And at the same time, the different types are important. Now that microbiome of yours, all of ours, is important. And what it does, it's the food that we eat that nourishes that, those trillions of micro, uh, microbes, the bacteria that are within our digestive tract. So what I suggest is feed the good, good bacteria, choose wisely. Carbohydrates, the fiber, the impact on the microbiome, what research has suggested, and I'll keep it at a top level, research has shown that the good carbohydrates, those non-digestible carbohydrates, help to feed the bacteria in the microbiome. A low fiber diet may lead to gut dysbiosis. Ooh, there's a word. What that dysbiosis means is more of the bad bacteria, less of the good bacteria in your microbiome. So my suggestion, consume adequate fiber. Changing the amount and type of carbohydrate within the diet, even in a short duration, can have an impact on the gut bacteria. And I have concerns if people reduce their carbohydrate intake or the types of carbohydrates, certainly the bacteria that would feed off of those carbohydrate food sources can die off. On a no-carbohydrate, low-carbohydrate diet, the bacteria does not get the food sources. Those bacteria die off. And do you think your gut digestion will be impacted? Absolutely. Now, there is a study done, Sonnenberg team in Stanford, and what they said is the impact on the gut bacteria by way of diet is multi-generational, which means for those of us as 
you know, in terms of mothers, have an impact in the diet of their offspring, and it's multi-generational. That's significant. So dietary fiber, what types are there? The fiber that comes from the plant food. So I mentioned the fruits, the vegetables, the grains, the nuts, the seeds that the, your body can't digest, can't absorb. Those, if you're looking at it in terms of uh, some of the key words, non-digestible carbohydrates, lignans. Functional fibers, though, are fibers that are non-digestible, but they do have a benefit for health, and they're isolated. Some of the examples, some of you may be consuming oat bran, psyllium, and then prebiotics. The fiber helps in terms of the adequate intake. What research has shown is that fiber plays a role, and it is linked to the improvements in blood sugar, the cholesterol levels, blood pressure, reduced risk of colon cancer, reduced constipation levels, but also from the functional fibers, we see the feeding of the, the healthy bacteria. Again, improvements in blood cholesterol levels, blood sugar levels, and by consuming the prebiotics, Anyone who has issues with constipation, that can help. We also see the improvements of some of the minerals, calcium, magnesium, for example. And there are research studies showing that the prebiotics can have an impact on reducing the risk of obesity. This is cool. Now, here's a big chart. And just to share the details with you, prebiotics, huge impact in terms of health. They have a role in increasing the levels of the good bacteria. You might hear about lactobacillus. You might hear about bifidobacterium. But in turn, it can impact the immune system. It can affect all of the, that that I'd mentioned. Prebiotics are soluble fiber. They feed the good bacteria. They're targeted. They are available by way of food. And some of the key foods you might see as asparagus, onion, garlic, the Jerusalem artichokes. You heard about them earlier today by way of the food demonstration, but unfortunately, they're available in very low amounts. So functional foods, supplements, under the names of inulin, chicory root, fructooligosaccharide, or FOS, we see oligofructose, the GOS, or galactooligosaccharide, and xylooligosaccharide, as well as other emerging prebiotics. My suggestions, eat adequate fiber, dietary fiber. Those of you who are consuming low levels, my suggestion, gradually increase your fiber intake, let your gut get used to them, and at the same time, consume adequate fluid. Look for functional prebiotics to obtain some of those specific health benefits that I'd mentioned to you. Certainly the fortified foods and beverages, supplements can play an important role in helping us to achieve our prebiotic intake. They are as prebiotics found in a number of food sources from bars to beverages and supplements as well. What's important if you have issues Certainly look to someone who has a training, the education, who can assist. Registered dietitians, the easiest way to find us would be through find a dietitian, Dietitians of Canada, someone with digestive health expertise, and also the information available through Dietitians of Canada on digestive health, fiber, and certainly much more. As well, Canadian Digestive Health Foundation has information specific to fiber and other digestive health issues. And with that, I thank you.